Radio. What's going on, everybody? We are back. This is episode 235 of the Dark Windows podcast. <sighs> My name is Kevin. I'm Kevin. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so, I mean... This is our episode. Unless anything's weird, it weird just happened this week. You want to just jump into it? Because I've had nothing going on this week. I mean, I stayed home from work today because I wasn't feeling good this morning, but... You other than that... vagina. Listen, I've been up since like three o'clock in the morning with the shits. Oh, so it wasn't really happening. <clears throat> That's always fun, you know. <clears throat> the yeah. shits are the shits are. It was wonderful. great. It was a it was a fucking hoot. Well, really I, enjoyed it. I mean, I basically broke my toe. Yeah, we got. You should post pictures of that. It's fucking gross. Or people will appreciate it. Mm. If you don't, I will because I have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to put a picture up. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. nasty. Yeah, and I'll. I'll <clears throat> Yeah. Tell them how you broke your toe. So, Friday night, I was taking my dog outside for the last time, and uh, I had the leash on her, opened the door, <clears throat> didn't realize that the neighbor from across the road's dog was on the, my lawn, and my dog realized it. Because their dog happens to be all black. Mm. You know, it's part black lab, part something else. So your dog's a racist. <clears throat> yeah. German right. going after black dogs. Yep. Makes she, sense to me. Yep. You know. Yep. And uh, she, uh, went, like, sh- sh- like a bolt of lightning fucking choom, right across. And I wasn't prepared. And I was pulled on by the leash and I went flying. I think I I have a a front stoop in front of my door. It's all concrete. About I don't know, about five, six feet long, something like that. And about four feet wide. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well I either took a step, maybe, I think. I'm not quite sure. But next thing I know, I was landing on the ground on the grass with my arm, my left arm tucked <clears throat> under me, and my arm was basically landing on the lower part of my ribs. And <coughs> I was uh, pretty much out of breath. And I was like, oh shit. And uh, my kind of my, uh, my toe started hurting after, you know, once I got my breath. I was like, Hey, my toe hurts. What the hell? And I look at it, and I had a a gash, you know, like a chunk of flesh taken out. You weren't there barefoot? No, oh. I was in my Crocs. Oh. And one of my Crocs, the one that were my well, my toe, my that foot, it was at, still at my door. Oh, Jesus. So I don't know if it came off and flew back. I was trying what. to escape. Yeah. Yep. And... Yeah, so the next, so I went to bed. My my toe was hurting, but I was like, ah, not not really all black and blue. And it was like a little little black black and blue spot. Got up the next morning, checked it. Eh, it hurts, but whatever. Nothing black and blue. I, mean, I guess I didn't break it. You know, because last time I broke my toe, it was instantaneous, like yeah. soon black and blue. Well, <clears throat> I went to. Uh, uh, my nephew's basketball game. He had two of them, and and then I then my other nephew wanted to play a little basketball after, and I was like, okay. So I shot around with him a little bit, and I was kind of running a little tiny bit. And by the time uh, we got done with his their cousin's game, I took my shoe off, well my croc, my sock off, and I was like. Oh shit, that sucker is bad. Yeah, like the black and blue is like real bad, and it then it started to extend. You know, more I've kind of walked on it, 
is extended like across my foot. Yep. And then I had to go to work. The the last time I broke my big toe was in high school playing baseball and I got it stepped on by a kid with metal cleats, even though we weren't supposed to be wearing metal cleats at our level of high school baseball. They're supposed to be plastic, rubber, whatever. Yeah. And uh, I was playing first base, as I do, and my left foot back on the bag, stretched out to go, you know, to, to, to stretch to make the play. And he stepped on my toe and then went over the back of me. And he split my toenail in half long ways with one of the cleats. And uh, I, I've, I was like, that, this fucking hurts. Like, this sucks. So uh, that was the last out. I go back in and I take my shoe off. And my blue socks are red from the tip of my toe to the base of my ankle. I was like, oh, shit. Peeled my sock off and both pieces of the toenail came off in it. And it was black, like down to the joint where it like connects to your foot. He fucked my foot up. Yeah. Like that was that was not fun. Mm. Yeah. But because I'm an idiot. I wrapped it and played and kept playing. Yeah, I, I was like, oh. You know, I'll, uh... But it was also, like, 16. You know, you recover a little bit quicker back then. You know, if I were to yeah. do that now, I'd have to take time off from work. It's like, nope. Nope. Broke my fucking toe. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Find I somebody mean, to replace me. I'm done. I, I, I might die. I went to work on Monday, and I was like, yeah, usually I go out and do inspections. I'm like, no, I can't do it. <coughs> Today... Uh, then yesterday I did the same thing. I didn't go out today. I was like, all right. After one inspection, I was like, oh, let me try it. That was a mistake. Cause by the time I was done, I went, yeah, this, this, this really hurts. And my toes like right now is kind of you know, throbbing. throbbing a little mm -hmm. bit going. Yeah. Yeah. You dumbass. That kind of hurts. You know, you putting, you're not trying to put pressure on it, but you're putting pressure on it. Cause I also put it in my my foot in a shoe as most of us do yeah well monday i didn't have it in a shoe and i went to uh the mountain and my foot was kind of cold yeah, no shit and i left uh, there and i left kind of early i was i left early that day because i was like yeah this is not doing good i can't i can't uh can't work like this no <clears throat> so but speaking of fuck ups and disgusting shit <laughs> what do you got this week oh this week well, um, surprise everyone, Kevin, not Kevin C, but Kevin H, nope. is doing a criminal. Solo crime. Yes. I am doing a solo crime. I am doing this, uh, this, this particular gentleman, uh, the vampire of... Let's not, let's not go that far. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. You have to call him a gentleman. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna put I'm gonna, before I go out and continue. I'm gonna say I think after getting so far into this, and this is gonna be a two parter, everyone, because you know there's just a lot that goes into this. Mm -hmm. Um, he, this guy probably is like the top, one of the top five. Yeah, he's pretty gross. Shitheads. Yeah, you know. Uh so without further ado. The topic for this week is the Vampire of Dusseldorf. It is our topic. The person's real name is Peter Curtin. Okay. Yep. He was born May 26th, 1883 in Cologne, Germany. He was the eldest of 13 children. Uh, their, fa their, <clears throat> their family was poor. So poor that they couldn't afford to rent uh, any place that was of significant size. Mm-hmm. They were so poor that they could only afford to rent a one-bedroom apartment. So, this means they that... They also changed the name of the city to Colon, just for when he was born there, because, spoiler alert, asshole. Mm. Well, uh... <clears throat> he... His fa he, he... Like, so they all shared the one-bedroom apartment. Yep. Okay, the one-bedroom. That's it. That's all they had. Um, his father was a molder who... I uh, like to actually go out after work to the local inn, and he would like to get drunk every night. Hey, yeah. 
And well, then he'd go home. Okay, yep. that's, that's, that sounds not so bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> when he would get drunk and go home, he would proceed to beat his kids. Because he's not regular <clears throat> drunk. He's German drunk. He's an asshole drunk. Uh, and Peter being the oldest, he would get most of the beating. And I would presume that the reason for this is because he would <clears throat> probably stick up for mm-hmm. his siblings that were younger than him. Protecting him. Yeah. Now, by him standing up to his father would mean that their father's rage would turn onto him. In addition to beating his kids, he would also rape his wife. Oh, neat. Now, this guy was such a piece of shit that... Um, that when he was raping his wife, he was doing this in front of his own kids. Yep. I mean, one bedroom apartment and everything. <laughs> yeah, but you probably would say kids get the fuck out and then, you know. Nah, you're drunk nah. piece of shit. You just go for it. <clears throat> yeah. So during this time period, uh, period in time, um, their, his mother, she didn't really have any recourse, especially in Germany, which uh, only had been a country for roughly 20 years yeah. at this point. Young. So... She couldn't do anything like women, you know, can now, uh, which is just leave them. I mean, she could have killed him. She could have. Which probably wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. She would, she and her kids would actually were stuck with him. And so they stayed. Uh, When he was nine years old is when he went off the rails. And if anyone was actually paying attention to his behavior, uh, they would have seen this change. This was the time that. Um, he would meet a guy in his apartment building that was a dog catcher. And this man introduced him to something kind of disgusting. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, he introduced him to bestiality. Ah, nice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and he would carry this out on dogs initially. And as he was m- mature, this would extend out to sheeps. Uh, sorry, not sheeps. Sheep, goats. And other fa- farm animals. Yeah, I mean, you get a little bit bigger, you gotta, uh, yeah, you gotta step up the ladder because you know if not, you're gonna. <coughs> As a grown man, you can't fuck a chicken. Is what I'm saying. You know? Well, uh, call me a chicken fucking balls. Now, he wasn't getting in the norm. You know, just I guess just having sex with the animal wasn't doing it for him. So he would find that he would have to get more pleasure out of it. So what he would do is he would actually stab the animal yeah. while he was doing his yeah. thing. Also, when he was nine, uh, is when he claimed that he would commit his first crime. And his claim was that he pushed... Uh, <clears throat> is fucking animals not a crime at this point in Germany? I mean, there's places here where it's still technically not <clears throat> like a crime. Well, but... crime that was... That would be uh, noticed by the police. Oh, okay. 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 Um, and this crime was murder. Oh. Okay. That, that, that's a big one. <clears throat> his claim was that he pushed one of his friends into the water, and his other friend jumped into the water to save their friend. Now, when they would come back up for air, Curtin claims that he held both their heads under the water until they stayed down. Now... The incident at the time was actually dismissed as an accident. Yeah. Because they didn't, I guess, didn't believe a nine-year-old. Yeah. You know. A kid couldn't do that. No. Yeah, they sure could. There's a lot of kids True. under the age of 10 that have killed people. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So then in 1899, so a little further down the road, when he was 16 years old, he would progress from sexual acts with animals to a life of petty crime. This is when he would run away from home because, well, he run, would run away because he didn't want to get beat by his father anymore. Right. Understandably. Uh, it wasn't long after he ran away that his father would actually be arrested and sent to prison for three years. He was arrested for having an incestuous relationship with his 13-year-old daughter. Yeah. Uh, I would venture to guess that his wife wasn't doing it for him anymore, so... He set his sights on his daughter, who was coming of age. <clears throat> it, it's not even necessarily just that. It's also a control thing. Because he's going to do it in front of her, and guess what she's going to do? Nothing about it. You know? True. Or, 
or maybe he didn't. I don't know. That There's really... a lot of fucking incest in Germany and Austria. Uh, like another guy that we'll cover at some point in time, you know, kind of built a specialty area for it and uh, did it for quite some time. But this is not the only German fella from this time frame that went <clears throat> that had this kind of shit going on in this family either. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's Peter fucking Alabama of Europe. Peter would also be sent to jail for his crimes. And while in prison, he found that the prison conditions actually suited his mentality. Oh, yeah. Uh, He would go from doing things he did to animals to humans instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, He would go from... Oh, sorry. Each time uh, he would be put into jail, his rage against society increased. And what he would do uh, would increase. He, re- he discovered a fascination for brutal sexual acts while in solitary confinement, which enhanced his, fat- his fantasies so much that he began to break prison rules to ensure the maximum time in solitary confinement. Yeah. <clears throat> because they didn't look at him being in solitary as... They looked at it as a punishment. He did not. No. So this would lead him... Uh, in nineteen, in May twenty fifth of nineteen thirteen, the same year, after being released, uh, from one of his many stays in prison, he would commit several sexual acts, and one of them, uh, would lead to his first recorded murder. Mm. The first victim that he would kill was a ten year old by the name of Christine Klein. <sighs> uh, this particular, so. On the 25th of May, on this particular day, in the evening time. What year is this? Uh, 1913. Oh. Oh. Um, in the evening, he had been looking to rob an inn where the owners would have uh, slept above the inn. Yep. Because it's kind of common. It's kind of what you did. Yep. Well, the inn that he happened to uh, upon rob and find what, uh, was, he found Christine Klein. And this was in Cologne. Yeah. <clears throat> he didn't he have to go out of town for it. Yeah. Uh, he does a count of what, um, <clears throat> what he did. So actually I'm going to read verbatim his, Oh yeah. In his let's, own let's, words. Let's get it. I broke in. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, his account of what he actually did to her. Okay. Or the event. Right. What well. happened. So I broke into, uh, broke into a house in, uh, Wolstrauss, which is uh, actually part of Cologne, like like the, out in the burbs, kind of no suburb, kind of like, little it's like neighborhood a different or something. section or whatever. Yeah, um, an inn owned by Klein, and went up to the first floor. I opened different doors and found nothing worth stealing, but in the bed I saw a sleeping girl of about ten, covered with a th- uh, a thick feather bed. I had a uh, small but sharp pocket knife with me, and I held the child's head, and I cut her throat. Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you, before I go any further, this is a disclaimer, everybody. Um, I don't like reading this stuff, but I kind of have to because this is this is what happened. Um, and, yeah. <clears throat> it's disgusting. Details are important, you know. It, yeah, details are important, but it's disgusting what he does. <clears throat> so I heard the... Um, I'll read that again. So I had a small but sharp pocket knife with me, and I held the child's head, and I cut her throat. I heard the blood spurt and drip on the mat beside the bed. It, sp- <clears throat> it spurted in an arc right over my hand. The whole thing lasted about three minutes. Then I went and locked the door again and went back home to Dusseldorf. Kurtz, uh, so before he actually had killed her, Mm -hmm. he actually had, um, well, with his pocket knife, he actually had strangled her to death Mm. with both of his hands. He choked her. The, the child struggled for some time before unconscious, yeah, because I mean, <clears throat> strangling somebody takes some time and effort. It's not it's not like in the movies where they just grab you know grab somebody's throat and hold it for five seconds and they're dead. No, it 
generally what happens if you're choking them from the front is when you put your thumbs over their throat and push, it actually breaks the hyoid bone in the throat, which is a bone in your throat, obviously. And that causes it so that you basically drown yeah, because you can't breathe back up through it. Well, he didn't. He just made her go unconscious. He just wrapped his hands around and she just went lights out London. <clears throat> but yeah, like I said, it's it's still not a not a quick or easy process. No. It's... And then he would actually put her head. I don't know why, but he would take her head and put it over the edge of the bed. Mm-hmm. And he penetrated her genitals with his fingers. Yeah. So he would do that. Yep. Uh, an autopsy of her body would find that her body was pale, and there was hardly any uh, post mortem staining. Meaning that there was any, <clears throat> nothing, no ejaculates or anything coming out of her. Right. Uh, and also there and, was no blood running out of her after she was, you yeah, because it's all gone. And her tongue was actually severely bitten. Yep. Because when you're, again, when you're choking somebody, generally the, your tongue will come out and, <coughs> you know, yeah. it swells up and shit and it's, yeah. If you've ever seen pictures of someone who has str- been strangled to death, it's fucking gross. Like your eyes bulge out and shit. You turn purple. Your lips will split sometimes. Sometimes. Well, he wasn't. She didn't choke her to death. He just choked her to the state of unconsciousness. Yeah. Then he still, slit her throat. No. It's still fucking gross. <clears throat> um, on the throat there were two wounds uh, separated from each other. The one shallow, only one to two millimeters deep. The right. other. Uh, deep, nine centimeters in length. Oof. The upper wound suggested a single stroke. The lower wound had been uh, made by four movements. That's the deep one. Yeah. Because <clears throat> the upper one, two millimeters, that's like, that's barely breaking the skin. Now, so the other get... one is like, he's getting in there. So now, this is where, um, kind of things get, uh, we have to kind of jump back a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so... The previous night, so on the 24th of May, uh, Peter Klein, who was the uh, father of Christina, Mm -hmm. uh, and her uncle Otto Klein, had gotten into an argument. Of course she has an uncle Otto. (coughs) Yep. How fucking German do you have to be? Um, They got into an argument after her uncle had asked his brother for a loan, and his brother refused. And in a violent rage, he had threatened to do something to his brother, uh, quote, who his bro- that his brother would, quote, would remember all of his life. Ah, so he just made himself a suspect <clears throat> yeah. by being an idiot. Uh, in the room in which the child had been killed, the police found a handkerchief with the initials PK. <laughs> and it seemed uh, unconceivable that Otto had borrowed it from his uh, brother, Peter. Suspicion of Otto was deepened uh, by the fact that the murderers uh, seemed otherwise uh, mo- uh, motiveless. Yep. And the child had been throttled unconscious. Her throat had been cut with a sharp knife. There were signs of some uh, sexual molestation, yep. but not the- rape. And again, it seemed possible that Otto Klein had penetrated the child's ven- genitals in order to pro- provide... An apparent motive. <clears throat> he was charged with Christina's crime, but the jury, although par- uh, partly convinced of his guilt, felt the evidence was not s- significantly strong enough, and he was acquitted. Which, I mean, that's fair because he didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> he just so happens to have the same initials as this piece of shit that we're talking about. So. I wonder how many people back in the day got fucking strung up for having the wrong <laughs> name. Because they got blamed for something that someone who had the same name or yeah. same initials as them had. Yeah. Man, that would suck. Well, it's like with uh, Chikatilo. They executed like four different guys mm-hmm. for his crimes. Well, he was still out killing people. Like the first guy, they're like, okay, this is our guy. Take him out back behind the, the prison, you know, tug his ear off to the side and put a nine millimeter around in the back of his head. Yeah. Then they keep going. And they're like, oh, shit. Well, eh, whatever. <laughs> this, you know. Then they pick up another guy and do the same thing. One of them, his mother didn't even know he was dead until after the whole thing with Chikatilo had been on TV. 
when they're like, yeah, there was also these other guys that we we tied to the crime and they announced all they like, like released all yeah. the names. And his mom's like, oh shit, that's why I haven't heard from him in years because the fucking cops killed him. Yeah, well, I mean, not really the cops, the Soviet government killed him. The KGB. Yeah, <clears throat> or some somebody at the fucking Black Dolphin or wherever. Just you know. So. So we have Otto being acquitted. Okay. Yep. So now let's go back to the 26th of May, the day after the crime. Mm-hmm. Um, because after little Christina's body had been found, Curtin actually returned to the scene of the crime the next day and was enthralled by the horror of the killing had invoked by the yeah, locals. A lot of guys, especially do that. when the sexual assault uh, came to light. And on the following day, Curtin went back to Mulheim and in a cafe opposite of Klein's Inn, sat and drank a glass of beer. Yeah. The killer later remarked that uh, all the all around him, the people were talking about the murder and, quote, all the horror and, and indig- indignation. Indignation. Yes. Wow. I can't fucking say that word. I-N-D. <laughs> um, did him good. Curtin was... Uh, oh, yeah, he totally got after that. Like, oh, yeah. There, there's so many guys that return to the scene of the crime while people are investigating it that they've committed, and they're just like, that was the best feeling ever, like, which is fucking bizarre. Yeah. So Curtin was safe from capture, and his sadistic impulse had been uh, awakened. With yeah. this, his bloodthirsty appetite uh, whetted, Curtin soon began a series of acts and strangulation attacks on the people of Dusseldorf. Yeah. Show I listened to would refer to that as the scum nut being broken. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, he would then be called up, up to serve in the army uh, during oh, yeah, World um, War One. Exactly, huh? Weird. But And unfortunately, of two <clears throat> fucking people that I really wish had died during World War One. There's this guy and Hitler, and neither one of them fucking, you know, they both made it through, no. which is unfortunate. <clears throat> uh, he didn't make it very far because, because he got kicked out or whatever, you know. Well, military discipline didn't suit him. Right. And he deserted from his barracks. He was jailed and captured and remained in prison until 1921. All I'm saying is if anybody deserved trench foot and then to get shot in the face during a gas attack, it'd be him. And it actually you know. w- was his uh, longest sentence. It was for, so from 1918 to 1921, somewhere around there. Because I'm assuming the final sentence <laughs> is pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and his rage uh, at this injustice intensified. Following his release from prison, he moved to uh, Adelberg, where he met and married a former prostitute. Good on Who ya. had been jailed for murder of her fiancé. But I can fix her. <laughs> well, uh, he spent the next four years living a life of relative uh, normality and found work as a molder, his father's profession. What exactly is a molder? Like somebody that molds things? Yeah. Or someone who cultivates mold or uh, someone who installs molding? You know, because if that's the case, technically I was a part time molder, but uh, probably someone who creates molds or works with molds. This dude looks okay. like he's fucking six years old. So, a goatee. molders are responsible for creating products chosen uh, for one or several materials. They usually mold, form, cast, shape, or okay. carve products <coughs> for use as uh, food, tile, pipes, candles, and so he's in manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they will. They work with materials such as clay, glass, concrete, stone, plaster, food, or combinations of various materials. Yeah. I mean, technically, I was a molder then when I worked at the plastics. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Making reels. Yes, you true. Know. So, um, even becoming... So, yeah, he found a, his profession, <clears throat> uh, became a molder, like his father, even becoming active in the trade union. Because he was now involved in this this new political based venture, his life was fairly normal for mm-hmm. the next four years. Yeah. Uh, in 1925, who mo- he moved back to Dusseldorf. Uh, Curtin saw Dusseldorf again in the evening light and rejoiced that quote the sunset was blood red on my return. Oh yeah, he's a quote. fucking psycho. Yeah. 
interpreting this as an omen of his destiny. Four the years... blood moon <clears throat> shines upon my face. Yeah. Get out of here, you fucking dork. <laughs> four years of Damn arson attacks. <laughs> Four years, four years of arson attacks and petty crimes seem to have controlled the murder streak. He started growing his bangs out so he could keep one down over one eye. Maybe, you know, possibly flip it a bunch. No, I don't think so. Smoking not cigarettes and painting his nails black. No, no, I'm not. No, he's not. He's not. Emo. He'd be like one of those kid, like the, the the emo kids from South Park, but like bigger and more German. <laughs> I don't think so. The goofy little mustache. Uh, not really. Life is pain. <laughs> Flips his hair. No, because he he looked like a <clears throat> he he looks like a German guy from the 1900s. I mean, a little Charlie Chaplin mustache, sort of. <laughs> very nice of you to very politically correct to call it a Charlie Chaplin mustache <laughs> instead of you know. <laughs> it wasn't Adolf. But I mean, the, the, it wasn't the, just the... it wasn't just here, right in the middle. No, this was like. Have you ever? Broad. Yeah, Hitler's mustache was broad too, but it was like just a little bit wider than his nose. Well, this guy's was like tapered down. It's a Hitler mustache. It's got a fucking different wing to it. Well, it was the era. Come on. <sighs> yeah, it was fine, but whatever. And he and he kind of had that like, you know, parted hair. You know, parted in the middle. Yeah. Sort of. <clears throat> kind of looked like a. He looked like an 1800s child molester. No, he looked like a eighteen uh, hundreds. Um, like he could be like a, I don't know, like a banker, something like that. Maybe so he's an butler. adult molester. <laughs> a banker? Is that adult yeah. molester? Yeah, bank banks suck, dude. Let's be real. But the okay, I don't know. Hold on, um, let me. So, for, uh, <clears throat> so four years of arson attacks and petty crime seem to have controlled the murderous streak. But these proved <clears throat> to be only a prelude to the horrors witnessed by Dusseldorf in the year of 1929. One unlucky victim, Maria Kuhn, mm-hmm. survived repeated stabbing by a curtain that caused 24 individual wounds. So without the mustache, he looks kind of <clears throat> like Gary Oldman. Which makes me wonder what Gary Oldman was doing in the early 1900s. True. Huh. True. Gary, Gary, Gary. Uh, so th- this crime escalated, uh, escalation reached its peak in the killing of nine-year-old Rosa o- uh, Oliger on February 9th of 1929. She was stabbed 13 times by Curtin, who claimed during the brutal attack uh, before he dumped her body under a hedge, then <clears throat> that he had... Uh, then attempted to set fire to her remains to destroy the evidence. Gross. Rosa was the first of a number of victims that included young girls, women, and even men over the next 15 months. So he's not picky. <clears throat> no. A 45-year-old mechanic named uh, Shearer followed five days later, the victim of multiple stab wounds. Curtin again returned to the scene of the crime to relieve the to relive the moment even speaking to detectives about the murder. A sensationalist German press covered the attacks <clears throat> extensively, and when they discovered that investigators believed that the attack uh, might be attacker might be drinking the blood of his victims, he was uh, immortalized in print as the, quote, vampire of Dusseldorf. Mm-hmm. The search for the serial killers received a major setback, however, when a a learning disabled individual named uh, Stasberg, accused of similar crimes, inexplicably admitted to all of the so-called vampire killings. He was committed to an insane asylum, and the police were convinced that he was uh, that the case was uh, solved. <clears throat> so, kind of like um, you know, the man we just talked about. Which one? Um. Yes, Klitschko or what the fuck is his name? No, nope, no, nope. Klitschko was a boxer. <laughs> You're thinking uh, of uh, 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 Chikatilo. Yes, yes, that one. And besides, if you're gonna if you're gonna say Klitschko, you got to be more specific. Oh, because there's two of them. Oh, sorry. They're both heavyweight champions, as a matter of fact. Um, then oh, one no. of them became the mayor of Kiev, and uh, 
was apparently mm. on the roof with a belt-fed machine gun for a while with a like a carton of cigarettes waiting for the Russians to show oh. up. Oh, well. So, I mean... My, my apologies for uh, for using the wrong one. Hey, get your fucking Ukra- yeah. Ukrainian straight, because all three of okay. them are, too. Okay. Because so, Chikatilo was also a Ukrainian. So let's uh, let's take a break here, and we'll come back. We'll you know what? Let's up. take a fucking break. Yeah. What you don't know is we took a little bit longer than normal break. But you don't know that. Ha ha. <laughs> and they won't know that. Uh, so in August, however, a series of strangulations and stabbing uh, incidents made the police aware that a madman was once again on the prowl. On the 21st of the month, in western su- suburb of uh, Lyonfeld, three people were stabbed while walking home at night. Just the- <clears throat> completely fucking random. Yeah. Yeah. The three random victims were all uh, bidding good evening, quote-unquote, mm. before being subjected to a deep knife wound in their ribs and back. By August 29th, uh, I'm sorry, not August 29th, August of 1929, it became apparent that their uh, conviction was premature. A series of strangulations and stabbings occurred, culminating in the brutal fair, uh, in the brutal fairground murder of uh, foster sisters, five-year-old Gertrude uh, Hamacher and 14-year-old Louise uh, uh, Lenzen. The next day, Curtin assaulted another woman, Gertrude uh, Schultz, who survived the attack and gave police a description of her attacker as a pleasant-looking male around 40 years old. Okay. <clears throat> so, that's kind of... Well, almost anybody. Yeah, I... <laughs> Might as well have been like, yeah, he was a white guy. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's kind of like... Maybe had well, facial hair, maybe didn't. I'm not sure. He was, you know, I mean, he was okay looking, you know, yeah. pleasant on the eyes, a little bit maybe, I don't Completely know. Completely normal. Average looking guy, nothing stuck out really. Yeah, nothing, yeah. Huh. nothing, you know. Sounds like everybody else that's ever been a fucking serial killer. Ted Bundy, Jeff Dahmer, yeah, normal looking dude. True. It's never a fucking slobbering maniac like they make him out to be in the movies. I mean... It's just a dude. Dennis Rader looked like everybody's uncle. I would say the only... Probably Richard sh- Ramirez and, like, yeah. Richard Chase are the only two that are, like, drooling psychopaths when you look at him and go, oh, yeah, that guy's a serial killer. Well, what about um, Ed Kemper? No, this looks like a normal dude. Except that like, he's seven feet tall, but he just yeah. looks like a normal dude. That's true. You know? Well, there was th- there was that one fucker. Uh, <clears throat> what was his name? He, he was a he was a cannibalistic guy. Fucking, the, they always have like pictures of him. Fucking like, like job of the fucking hut. Oh, like, Joe Joe Metheny. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. The, the, a lot of his story doesn't add up. Where no. he's like, oh, I was I was cutting people up and serving. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You weren't. You just fucking weren't. They tested all the meat that you were serving after you said that, and there was nothing like that. You were just a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. But, I mean, it's kind of weird. But, I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those, you know, general descriptions that you can't really, cops are like, yeah, the hell do you want us to do? You know, now, if you'd been a black guy in Germany back then, they'd have been like, oh, the one guy? Yeah, we can find uh, him. Ah, <laughs> yes. We know who there's, he There's is. not many of them kicking around. We'll find him. Don't you worry. So the panic would not stop in August. It would actually continue. And in September, he would strike again. And the victim this time was Ida Reuter. That's uh, a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> raped and killed her. And, it, and he would also go on to, to a servant girl named uh, Elizabeth... Dorier, uh, where that he uh, battered her to death on October twelfth of nineteen twenty nine. Two other victims. Randy named... wasn't around, man. Huh? So Randy wasn't around. Elizabeth. It wouldn't have happened. <laughs> he would have found out. Oh yeah. The cream oh. rises to the top. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Gee. Uh, you put his hands on Elizabeth. <laughs> I want him in a cage. <laughs> Make it so, McMahon. Sorry. 
Oh God! This is not not supposed to be funny, but we're gonna make it that way. God damn it! It's the last thing I do. <laughs> so two other victims named uh, Murr and uh, Wanders were uh, fortunate to survive brutal uh, hammer attacks, but the very nondescript appearance of uh, of Curtin. As described by his victims, made it difficult to narrow down the list of potential victims, or so, not victims, but suspects. Curtin enjoyed the mass hysteria and horror en- uh, enormously, feeding off the press attention, even going as far as to contact a newspaper on November 9th of 1929, with a map detailing the position of a body of his latest victim, Gertrude uh, Alberman. A five-year-old, he had stabbed to death two days before, dumping her body under some rubble. Oh, fuck this guy. Yeah. Start killing kids, that's where I have a problem. Yeah. You know. Um, Big time. The period between February and May of 1930 saw a continued spree of strangulation and hammer attacks. Although none with fatal consequences, despite the enormous manhunt now in operation, the killer had still not been apprehended, and Dusseldorf was at the point of public outcry. Whereas the motives may have been similar, the means used by the elusive curtain were uh, constantly changing, and as such provo- uh, provided no clear pattern for the investigation invest- investigating detectives. Uh, by May of 1930, sheer terror had gripped Dusseldorf, and the vampire was still on the loose. Mm -hmm. On May 14th of 1930, an unemployed domestic servant named Maria uh, Budlik left... Is that a homeless housekeeper? No, well, I don't know. How can you keep a house when you have no home? She's unemployed. Yeah, I mean, if you were a housekeeper back then, you lived with them. I don't know. No, she she wasn't a house... Well, she was a servant. Domestic servant. Housekeeper, yeah. He still would have lived there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she, she could have been a... I like mine better okay. than whatever you're saying. I'll go with it. <laughs> Fuck it. So uh, she left the cathedral city, uh, cathedral, uh, city of Cologne in the search of work in nearby Dusseldorf. The platform of at Dusseldorf Station, she was at, at, that, at that platform. She was accosted by a man who offered to show her the way to a... A girl's hostel. Oh, I bet he will. They followed the brightly lit streets for a while, but when he started le- uh, leading her towards the park, he, she suddenly remembered the newspaper stories of the murderer <laughs> and refused to go any further. Yes, halfway there. Wait a minute. Yeah. I remember that now. Fucking idiot. This sounds familiar. No, no, no. Dipshit. The man, well, the man insisted, and it was... Uh, while they were uh, arguing that the a second man appeared and inquired as to whether everything was all right. Clearly both upset and intimidated by the newcomer's arrival, the man from the railway station soon slunk away uh, and Fräulein uh, Budlack was left alone with, but with her rescuer. One Peter Curtin. <laughs> oh no! What uh, an unfortunate turn of events. <laughs> the girl. Shit. <laughs> this is a quote from him. The quote: "The girl told me that she was out of work and had nowhere to go. She agreed to come with me to my room oh, on no. uh, Met Namer Strauss, and then she was sudden. Then she suddenly said she did not uh, want sexual intercourse and asked me whether." I could find her somewhere else to sleep. I don't want to fuck. I just want to go to bed. End quote. Yeah. The pair went oh, to went by tram to uh oh. Okay, this tap is... into your Aryan roots and pronounce the shit yeah. out of this. Vorling uh Vorling plots. There you go. Nailed it sort of. Yes. <clears throat> Vorling uh, no, say how much? I'm not, I'm not... Gorblesburg. Nope. <laughs> Uh, it's Voringer Platz. That's what it is. And walk deep into the uh, Grafenberg Forest of uh, Woods. Sorry, not there, forest. There's no hotels woods. there. No. Why, why is she still following this guy? The other dude probably would have been fine. Yeah. 
you well, know, unless the other guy was fucking uh, probably a scumbag too, maybe. Uh, you know, Joaquin Kroll or some shit like that. Like, uh, she would have been okay because Germany was lousy with serial killers back then, and they were mm. all fucking gross. So this is when Curtin they got into the woods, and Curtin sees Budlock with one hand by the neck and asks whether uh, he could have her. He said, "Quote." I thought that under the circumstances, she would agree, and my opinion was right. <laughs> Afterwards, I took her back to the tram, but I did not accompany her to it because I was afraid she might inform the police officer who was standing there. Of course, I she had... has to agree because there's an implication that we're out in the woods, yeah. and if you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. Yes. she. He goes on to say, I had no intention of killing Budlock, as uh... she had... Offer no resistance. I don't buy it. Well. I mean, I hate to be that guy, but I think this guy might be a scumbag since he just coerced a woman you into think? having sex with him against her will. <laughs> but you, well, no, he didn't say against her will. She said she was like, sure, fuck it. Yeah, it, because yes, I will, because if not, you're going to kill me, right? Probably. Okay, cool. Then I'll do it. That's called coercion. <laughs> but he didn't say he was going to kill her. <sighs> okay, well, you can either have sex with me voluntarily, or I'm going to just rape the snot out of you. Which would you rather have? <laughs> well, that there's no, there's no, I don't know, inclination. He doesn't, ha- she doesn't know. <laughs> You're in the woods with this motherfucker who's already tried to fuck hey, you once. She's... And he went, nah, that's cool. Listen. So he took you to the woods and went, listen. She's a buddy. In, she's an innocent little. She's an innocent flower who doesn't know the the shit that's going on. Why are on you taking his side? Because, I'm not. I'm just saying she. I'm taking. I'm talking about her. Yeah. And she doesn't know. She she just thinks that he's the savior. Dude, he grabbed her by the throat and was like, "Listen, do you want to fuck well, now maybe or what?" She has a kink for that. I doubt it. D- Listen. Don't doubt something you don't know. You're not sure. I of. highly doubt that she, she was, might have a. Kink. I doubt she was right into that shit. You know, well, she, obviously she was because she fucked him, so she didn't die. I haven't. Whatever. Do you know how many dudes get fucked in prison so that they don't die? But a lot. He didn't say he was going to kill. Her. He didn't say he was going to, but he was totally fucking going to. We both know he was going to do this. He just said, "Can I have her?" That's all. He was like, "Hey, can I fuck you?" Yeah, you're like, be "Like, nah, it's fine. Whatever." Can say, like, "Fuck that." <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, whatever." So anyway, Curtin was remar- remarkably calm and collected throughout the ordeal, and made sure that no one on the tram saw him deposit the young girl at the station. Ugh. Deposit uh, is such a gross word with people like this. So uh, he said, "Quote: I don't think that Budlak would have been able to find her way back." To my apartment in the rather obscure Met Manor Strauss. Such, uh, so much the more I was surprised when on Wednesday, the 21st of May, I saw her again in my, in my house. Contrary to the opinion of Curtin, Farline Budlak had indeed remembered the address, vividly recalling the nameplate, uh, Met Manor Strauss. Under the flickering gaslight. Most crucially, however, Maria wrote of her encounter in a letter of the 17th May to Frau uh, Bruckner. The letter never reached its intended recipient. The old woman from the castle in Young Frankenstein? No. Oh, it's her cousin then, at least, because it was pretty fucking close. True. Yeah. No, it was... Bluha. Yeah, but, but, but Pretty damn close. <laughs> <laughs> So the letter never. I run a castle in the city. She runs a castle in the country. Whatever. You know. Just change it a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, so the letter never reached its intended recipient. It was misdirected and opened by Frau uh, Rugman, who took one look at the contents and called the police. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that right there, and we're going to continue oh, I hate this, this piece next of shit week. so much. We're going to continue next week with him being caught. His trial, and then we're going to talk about his execution and his last words. So, is it bad that like I kind of hope as part of his execution, they hog tie him 
and then they hang him up naked, right? So his little nut sack is hanging down, and they just swat it with a wooden spoon a bunch in the back of the nuts. Nah. God, to be great. Nah. <sighs> Maybe I just get a more vivid imagination than the Germans when it comes to punishment. This guy gets the fucking guillotine. Yeah, that's too easy. Hey, happens. Either dull it or just swap it out with just a giant chunk of metal and just fucking just basically smash his neck mm. until he stops. True. There we go. I mean, I, I don't have a problem, like... Instead of capital punishment, we could just paralyze these people and leave them to, you know, do whatever. I'm fine with that. No chair, nothing. Just like, hey, you know, you, you can't feel shit from the waist down. Enjoy it. Figure it out. We're going to turn you loose on the streets. It's up to you. We're going to have somebody come by every day and make sure you don't have any money. And if they do, they're going to beat you in the spine and take it. <laughs> Fuck your legs. Mm. You scumbag. <sighs> So uh, yeah, so we're gonna we'll pick up next week. We're uh, with the rest of this. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, hate to break it to you, but uh, we're gonna spend the next couple weeks in Germany, actually. So nice. Yeah, yeah. Only a couple decades later, too. Actually. Ah. <laughs> Spoiler alert: We're talking about the Korean War and Germany's involvement in it. No, that's not that at all. Um, but. Uh, it may or may not have something to do with some Nazi shenanigans. Aha. Uh-huh. So it's going to be fun. <sighs> anyway, go over to studio.com. Find yourself some earbuds or whatever else you want over there. Throw it in your cart. Put the checkout code of darkwindows15 in, and you get 15% off your entire order. You can also go over to patreon.com forward slash darkwindows podcast. And for $5 a month, you get a bonus episode once a week. And they are usually almost as good as the regular ones. <laughs> they're not as long as the regular episodes, but they're still good, I think. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm partial to, you know, our own show, but they're okay. Yeah. It's not the best show I listen to on Patreon, but it's pretty good. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, the five bucks a month you get a you get a bonus episode once a week usually, and um, yeah, check us out on Facebook, Dark Windows Podcast. There is the show page and also a fan page. The show page you can go on and leave a review, and if you leave a review of the show and you put a topic in there, I'm not saying that we'll cover it immediately, but it'll definitely get pushed to the top of the list. So it'll be like within the next few weeks. Okay, we cover it, um, and. Uh, yeah, we're on Instagram also, Dark Windows Pod. We're sort of, we've been waved in the direction of Twitter <clears throat> at Dark Windows Pod also. Um, but yeah, so until next week, we get to finish talking about this piece of shit. All right, quick question before we go. <sighs> yeah. If you need a hit to save the save the world, are you taking Manny Ramirez or Kenny Gr- Ken Griffey Jr.? That's a dumb question, dude. Kid all day. More consistent, yeah. What's everybody else? I want to know what everybody else's thought is. Because man, yeah, man, Manny was Manny struck out a lot because he was a power hitter. Griffey just wanted to put the ball in play. Yeah. You know, I take him or his dad. You know, mm-hmm. fa- like to save the world. Yeah, I want the last name Griffey on the jersey when they come to the plate. I like it. All right. Well, it also depends on what we're saving the world from, though, because like sometimes it's like not even worth it. Really, at that point in time, it'd be like I, I don't know. Give me fucking. Todd Helton, I guess, you know, or somebody like that. Actually, no, he was a good hitter, though. But if there is, a, like, a choice between, okay, this is a harder one, Griffey or Tony Gwynn? Tony Gwynn. Yeah. Statistically the best baseball player of all time? Yeah, Tony Gwynn. Yeah. Motherfucker faced, like, Pedro uh, Pedro Martinez and uh, Greg Maddox, like, 250-some-odd times between the two of them and struck out exactly zero times against both of them? Yeah, come on. Yeah. They're two of the best. Tony Gwynn's fucking fantastic. His son didn't quite get it, mm. you know, but Tony Gwynn was, was the man. <clears throat> it happens, you know. You know. All right, well, yeah. Next okay, time. Well, here, here's another one then. Oh, okay. To save your family, you have to take a hit in the open field from either Ray Lewis or Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Which one are you taking? <laughs> Both in their prime. I'm going to say Ray Lewis. I don't like my family that much. <laughs> because Lawrence Taylor. I mean, both of them would, oh. would actually try to kill you. So, 
But it's like, do you want to get hit by a guy that's on PCP or a guy that's on a bunch of coke? That's really your choice. Hold on. Who was on PCP? Oh, Ray Lewis. was. When, okay, when he got arrested, guy... he was like, for killing that dude, he was on PCP. I'm going to go with the guy on coke. Yeah. I mean, LT was on coke, but he was also a child molester? Uh, he did have sex with an underage girl more than once that he paid. So, mm-hmm. kind of gross. Ray Lewis at least just killed a man. And then came back looking like uh, Malcolm X on fucking creatine. With his little glasses and stuff. So Well, he got off of the crime. It doesn't mean he didn't do it, though. A lot of athletes get away with shit. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, he went to court. Yeah. So, anyway. Just so you... <laughs> 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 oh, so, alright, so, just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean the dark can't see into you. And, uh... If you're interested, stick around for Patreon. It'll be in four-ish days after this. So just hang out. It'll be there.